What is up guys? Welcome to a new YouTube video. In this video, I'm gonna be going over three of the most potent lessons I learned in 2022. And looking back on 2022, there was a lot of growth that happened, a lot of lessons learned, a lot of things I realized, and many ways that I changed as a person, especially in business. And it was kind of hard to distill the list down to three things, because uh, there's a lot of things I could say. But these are the three of the things that I can look at that really entered into a new chapter, or really really pivoted or really evolved in 2022 that I'm currently still holding very close to my heart heading into 2023. First lesson I learned is how important it is to be in control of your state of being. This isn't necessarily like a point blank lesson I learned in 2022. I've been in and around the study of one state of being for the last few years and ever since I dropped out of university really I started to become a student of it a little bit. You know, you get into Tony Robbins stuff, you get into Joe Dispenza stuff, and all these guys are talking about state of being. They all have their own verbiage, but they're talking about the same major outcome, which is being in control of your state, the combination of your thoughts and your emotions. And one thing that really clicked, and this was late 2022, I'm talking the last days of 2022, um, you know, early December, I started reading Dr. Joe Dispenza's book, Becoming Supernatural Again. This is like the third or fourth time that I've read it. And the first few times that I read it, you know, I, I read it like maybe like once per year over the last three, four years type of deal. And the previous two to three times that I've read it, nothing really connected that much with me. Maybe I take a little nugget here. Maybe I, I have a little takeaway here. Um, but for the most part, the majority of the material flew right over my head. And this is largely due to the fact that I wasn't at a point in my development where I was ready to really take it all in and apply it and make that realization. And this is something that you'll find oftentimes, just as a side note, when you read a book at a certain point in your development and then you read it a year later, five years later, it's gonna be a completely different book to you. You're gonna see different things, you're gonna have different takeaways, and you're gonna become a different version of yourself as a result of it. And this most recent time that I read Becoming Supernatural, which by the way, I recommend to all you guys to read no matter where you're at in your journey, is even if you take away one thing, or maybe if it just introduces you to the concept, or maybe you have a massive realization, it will benefit you in your life. So. Just a side note, I recommend getting the book. But this last time when I read it, in late December 2022, and by the way, it's currently what, uh, January 5th, 2023, so I, I finished it five, six days ago. It hit this time, to say the least. Like every single word was just smacking me right in my face. And with that book, by the way, every word has substance. Like there isn't a sentence in there that isn't there for a purpose. And it's so heavy, and there's so much material, so it's really hard to digest all of it. But I, I was just at a place in my development in regards of what I wanted to improve about myself and, and what my what my mindset was open to and the ways that I intentionally wanted to develop heading into 2023, it just smacked. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. And ever since then, ever since those concepts, I've been doubling and tripling down on my own state of being uh, control and management. You know, I'm not even gonna try to summarize the book in this video because this that would extend the video by probably 20 to 30 minutes. Maybe I'll make another um, more book review oriented video about it, but at the end of the day, Joe essentially bridges science and spirituality and it teaches you how you can take back control of your thoughts and your energy and your emotions the meanings you attach to things, the emotional addictions and attachments you have to things. And he essentially shows you and demonstrates to you how you can detach yourself from these emotional connections you have to the past or, or, or predictions of the future. Bring all your energy back to the present where you become a higher level, more creative, more authentic version of yourself to apply to whatever's right in front of you. And I recognize that in 2022, 2021, 2020, 2019, all these years, one of the main problems I was getting in the way of my execution, specifically in business, was my state of being, was these negative emotions that were just hanging around in my body, whether they were caused by uh, trauma that happened in, in your childhood, whether it's caused by something that was programmed in you along the way, whether it's a meaning you're attaching to something, right? These negative emotions can happen, and what happens is they cause more thoughts that are in alignment with that emotion. So if you're feeling anxiety, you're gonna have more thoughts that are, that are gonna make you anxious. You're gonna think of worst case scenarios. You're gonna think you're not good enough to do something. You're gonna think X, Y, Z, and then this thought loop just happens. Negative thoughts, negative emotions, more negative thoughts, more negative emotions, bam, you don't execute because you're just in that state where you don't feel like doing anything. And this would happen to me 
over and over and over again over the course of my years in business so far where it would take me out for a day or take me out for a few days or maybe I gain a little bit of momentum and then it would take me out for another day and it was it was a cycle it was becoming very obvious and I think that that's why the book hit me so hard this time because I'm like wow this is one of my biggest problems in my business development right now I need to handle this like a lot of business problems are actually personal problems and this big personal problem was was causing uh, a lot of problems in my business in regards of execution and growth in my business and confidence in my business. After reading this book, I'm like, hell yeah, I, I, it just hit me. I'm like, this is what I need to double down on. And he teaches you different meditations in order to really like apply this work because it's, you know, it could be super fluffy to, and you might be thinking, wow, that, that sounds great, but like what, what actually needs to happen here? How do we do it? He goes over it in the book, trust me, just get the book. But the way that I applied a certain portion of it was through meditation because through meditation you can you can bring yourself back you can release those connections to those addictions to those emotions bring yourself back to a good state focus on your thoughts and focus on your breath and I'm very like oversimplifying it right now but now I do three meditations a day so three 30 minute meditations a day it seems like it's a lot but I view it as one step back to take three steps forward in regards to my time at least like it's a, it's a big time commitment to do that and you know I previously would have said like ah, oh, I'd rather spend that time executing my business and you know there's so many different things like angles that people have with this type of work um, you have some people saying nah, I just work 27 some people saying like well oh, when you feel stressed out just take a whole day off and things like this I'm not really sure but what I do know is I'm being very intentional about reconditioning my thoughts and reconditioning my emotions where I try not to end a meditation the same person that walked into that meditation so if I'm feeling stressed or anxious or self-doubt or whatever it is going into a meditation I try to end that meditation on a high vibration by through that 30 minutes I change my thoughts I change my emotions and then I enter that next portion of my day a different version of myself a version of myself that's going to produce better results in my business or whatever I'm sinking my teeth into for that portion of my day and there's so many different angles to this. Other things that affect your state of being are the action you take. A lot of people are waiting for motivation to take action, but in reality, the action will cause more motivation to take more action. Grant Cardone once referred to this as action intelligence, and that really kind of stuck with me. So that's still a part of my state of being conditioning as well. In addition, I think it's important to have a good diet, a good sleep routine. I think it's important to keep the promises you make to yourself, such as getting to the gym a certain amount of times per week and waking up on time, things of this nature, it all contributes to your state of being. So all those ducks are in a row, but most of all, I'm doing meditations and I'm also leaning into the hard work, which is required to take my business to the next level, which previously my state of being would have deterred me from. So now, even if I am in a shitty state, I'm gonna do that hard thing anyways, which will not only put me in a better state, like I said, action intelligence, but it will also move my business forward in a way that I want without having to worry about these little pockets of inconsistency due to the way I feel. So I hope that all made sense. I know state of being is a massive, massive rabbit hole and there's so many different elements of it, but that was one thing, I guess not that I learned, but one thing that I just took and realized to the next level and applied it to my life because I know it's so, so important. And speaking of leaning into the hard things and doing the things that I don't want to do, the next lesson I learned, and this was a lesson that really only crystallized in the last few days. So I guess it's technically a 2023 lesson, but you know, it was compounding over the course of 2022 and really through my whole business career so far, but I'm still counting it as a 2022 lesson. And that is that the unknown is actually a less scary place than staying stagnant. A lot of people will maintain their current positions in life or business business or their fitness because the unknown it seems scary there's all these worst case scenarios there's all these doubts you have about yourself and despite that the current situation isn't really what you want it to be it seems a lot less scary than the unknown but in reality staying stuck staying stagnant is much more scary than walking into the dark and leaning into the scary things that will actually take you to the next level in life yeah, the next levels in life will be scary for you. Whether you become a new version of yourself or you wanna take your business to that next level, there are gonna be elements of that will scare you. By definition, you're gonna to have to push yourself out of your comfort zone, so it will not be comfortable. But as I heard Alex Hormozzi say in a recent video on YouTube, your lungs will adjust. So once you once you enter into that new stratosphere of your identity, of your business, of, of whatever it is, you will adjust. Your thermostat will adjust. You will become the person that's comfortable operating in that environment and thriving in that environment. And then you're gonna look back and say, 
wow, I can't believe I spent all those years stuck. Like I have such compassion for that version of myself, but I wish I would have just leaped into this next level sooner. And I'm kind of like zooming out on my life and realizing that, you know, I have subconsciously kept myself stuck at certain levels, in particular business, just because that next level just on a subconscious level again seems scary whether there's self doubts or I think I'm not worthy enough or I think I can't handle certain things or X, Y, Z. And again, these aren't conscious thoughts. These are all happening in the body, again, due to certain things that were programmed in you via your childhood. But to summarize this lesson, I realized that the perception of the unknown is, is only scary because of all these meanings I'm attaching to it. It's super scary just because that's how I'm labeling it. When in reality, the unknown is exactly what I want. And like the expression goes, the treasure you seek is in the cave you fear to enter most. So in 2023, my intention is to enter those caves and no matter how scary it is, keep on putting one foot in front of the other because I know it's hell of a lot better than staying where I currently am. So that's lesson number two guys. Lesson number three is regarding the impact and the potency of positive inputs. And I've literally made probably like eight different pieces of content across YouTube, podcasts, Instagram, about why positive inputs are important and, and why people should do them and, and how they can help. But it was one of my most important implementations in 2022. So this video wouldn't be complete without it, even though I might be repeating myself a little bit. Positive input, what is it? It's anything that enters your, your brain, your nervous system, your subconscious, that is a positive influence on you, that serves you, that improves your emotions, your mindset, your beliefs. It can come in the form of a podcast, an audiobook, a regular book. It can come in the form of a person, something you read. It can come in different forms, but it improves you as a person, gives you new ideas, new inspiration, new energy. And talking about state of being, the first lesson, positive inputs are one of my tools that I use to consistently you know, bring in my thoughts and emotions back to a positive place. If I'm feeling stressed or anxious, the meditations that I'm currently doing, like I mentioned, currently help a lot. But if I'm on a run or if I'm doing a workout or if I'm, if I'm walking or if I'm making food or eating, I regularly have some form of positive input on. Now, my favorite forms of positive inputs as of late are uh, podcasts and YouTube videos. And some of the YouTube videos are just the video forms of the podcast, but I'm just digesting something from someone who has achieved what I want to achieve. So the most successful people on planet earth, dead and alive, have funneled decades and centuries of wisdom and lessons and energy and mindset and strategy into minutes or hours or pages of digestible content for you. And it's free and it's at our fingertips. And I think it's one of the most untapped assets that currently exists. So I routinely, what I like to call brainwash myself, like by brute force, pushing these ideas, mindsets, energy into my body, into my nervous system. And it eventually becomes who you are. The thoughts that these people are having eventually become the thoughts that you adopt yourself. So it's important to, again, brainwash yourself with the content of the people who you look up to the most and do it as often as you can. Because as Tony Robbins says, if you don't plant flowers, weeds are gonna grow in their place. Weeds grow by default. So you need to be intentional about planting flowers, feeding your mind, making sure your thoughts and your emotions, being intentional about their development. And this can take you from being anxious to feeling great over the course of a minute or an hour or a day it can completely turn around your whole state of being because once one thought enters and another thought enters, you start to think in a higher vibration. You start to think in a higher quality. Then you're like, okay, instead of being anxious, instead of being overwhelmed, instead of thinking I can't do something you're like, wait, I could do this. I'm good enough to do that. Let's do that. Let's, let's go attack it. It changes the orientation of your state of being. And it can, it can take you from like a, a one out of 10 to like an eight out of 10 in like an hour or 10 minutes. And it is very potent. And I'm a constant advocate of positive inputs for my clients, for my friends. I even have a positive inputs playlist on this YouTube channel. So it's currently called Mentor Teachings. I might just change the name to Positive Inputs though, since that's the way I'm labeling it all the time. But it's essentially a, an accumulation of videos that I've found particularly useful over the years from the most successful people in history of their content, of ideas, of education, of inspiration that I routinely just play in the background or again on a run or a walk or while cooking or whatever just to fill my brain. So if you wanna sink your teeth into that, feel free to go nuts. It's just, again, a free public playlist on my YouTube channel. But I encourage you to find the inputs that are most meaningful for you. So start to play around with which podcasts you like the most, which YouTube videos, which creators, which books, which authors, 
resonate the most with who you want to become and what you want to create and then routinely digest them, consume them. Let it become who you are on the inside and it can literally, again, change who you are, change your behavior, change the action you take and as a result, it'll change the results you create in your life. And again, I've been aware of this for many years. This wasn't novel to 2022, but in 2022, I really started to double down on it more than I ever have. And I just noticed the benefits that it helped me create. And I wanna spread this message as much as I can because in today's society specifically, there is an abundance of negative inputs entering everyone's stratosphere through news, through the media, through their friends. And the other side of the coin, of positive inputs is eliminating or reducing negative inputs. The reduction of negative inputs was maybe like a 2020, 2019, 2018 type of thing for me where the friends I didn't really resonate as, as much with, I kind of like, we drifted apart. I stopped consuming news and things of this nature and I pretty much detached myself from a lot of these things that didn't contribute to my energy. But a lot of people haven't done that yet. So they're still spending time around the friends that are just always complaining or always bitching or always like putting you down or, or just always wanting to go out drinking or not wanting to be productive and it's not serving your energy or you're still watching the news, you're watching you know, all the, the war stuff and all the, you know, all these murder things on like TikTok and things that aren't contributing to your energy. And so in conjunction with making sure you start introducing positive inputs, positive people, like-minded people, people that inspire you, mentors, new inputs like audiobooks, podcasts, in addition to implementing those, start to set boundaries around your negative inputs. So start to spend time around those people less and less. Start to watch less news. Start to unfollow those accounts that just soak your energy every time you watch it and you will literally start to transform. You'll feel your energy transform, your thoughts transform, your beliefs transform, your emotions transform. And as a result of that, you're a completely different person, which again, new behavior, new results, new life. So that's how important your environment and your inputs are. So I encourage you to audit your inputs as Andy Frisella says, and start to implement some inputs that serve you and start to reduce or eliminate inputs that don't. Again, I've experienced different elements of that lesson along the way. In 2022 in particular, I doubled down on the implementation of positive inputs and I encourage you to again do the same. But those are the three things in 2022 that were amongst the most profound for myself. And I encourage you to put in the comments, what were your top one to three lessons or realizations or developments in 2022? It's kind of fun to look back on how you improved, how you evolved and it can give you a lot of psychological fuel to keep evolving and to keep your foot on the gas. So feel free to comment down below what lessons you learned and I'd love to see what that is for you. But besides that, appreciate you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.